The most important short-lived climate force of pollutants which we're interested in at the moment are black carbon um, and tropospheric ozone. Black carbon is the product of incomplete combustion of fuels, such as diesel or people burning wood in homes in Africa and Asia. Environmentalism since 1945 provides a concise introduction to the greening of politics, science, economics and culture since the Second World War. The lab I run is affectionately known as the Mud Lab. It's the Sediment Ecology Research Group. And we specialise in examining the biodiversity and ecology of coastal habitats. The teams who participated in the York Green Neighbourhood Challenge after six months achieved an 11% reduction in their personal carbon emissions. And then you flick it over, and you flick it over to keep all the bugs in that you've caught. Now then what I do is I put it over my head and have a look. I'm not asking you to do that because there might be a bumblebee inside. There's lots of enthusiasm and lots of knowledge but it's just trying to put that into practice really for site management isn't it yeah. really. Um, even basic things like telling us what books to look at, like you said, to, to get certain flower books yeah. and the, the eye lenses and so on. Things like that, they're helpful for us. And, and once we've got them and you've come down and shown us and we get you down in summer again. Yeah, and, yeah. And when the stuff is up. Yeah. Well, the good life itself, I think it has impressed quite a lot of people more than they thought it would. The people come along and uh, they see what's happening. They've had um, lots and lots of little projects uh, thanks to yourself and your, your helpers. But we also work with them to create some videos and some messages to actually participate in the Rio conference itself. So there were two real events on that. They actually got to deliver a message that went to the Nobel laureates who were attending the symposiums in Rio, but they also did a big speech, their message on the environment and the future as they saw it and the things they were worried about. And that was also delivered to Rio. Hello. My name is Phoebe Frere and I am 13 years old. This is my question. Since the last Rio summit, the world has changed. So how will Rio 20 plus benefit the world and the environment? Now, Uplands have had quite a lot of research done on them over the last few years. But we're interested in looking at Uplands, not just from the point of view of production of food from pastoral agriculture, but also Uplands are important from the point of view of sequestering carbon. Um, storing nutrients and storing water and water supply. Uplands are also important culturally in terms of recreation, for example, for walking, climbing and so on. The map will match the location quite well and it will be orientated the same way and they can even point at the features they want to identify on the map and you can help them identify those on the paper. The first version of this technique that we developed uses one base map and everybody records their information on that map. We received a grant from the Big Lottery Fund in 2008 and with the aim of trying to inspire people to go out and explore their local environment. In Yorkshire and the Humber we've worked with over 15,000 people from all ages, all backgrounds, all abilities and we've been trying to get them to go out and explore their local environment. Uh, the educational materials will be focused on three sections, uh, so there will be sound, vision and code. Sound will contain uh, online materials for uh, composition, sound design, Vision will have uh, filming, uh, photography, uh, models for the 3D printing and uh, code uh, which is the first section will contain the materials for uh, game design, physical computing uh, and uh, programming the web. No one can understand trillions or even billions of dollars out of their own experience. No one has ever seen a billion, let alone a trillion, of any kind of objects one at a time. So one of our scenarios is called Shared Development Agenda. And this is a scenario in which we try to articulate a, a world where we have eradicated poverty. On the one hand, we do have a number of tools for um, better understanding, quantifying and also mapping the different aspects of the nexus. Uh, SOMANET is stands for Sustainable Mechanism Research Network. It's really regional knowledge communities that consist of the members from uh, research organization backgrounds, academic, the NGOs. Um, another project we did in uh, rural areas of England uh, looking at social and environmental inequalities and for this uh, we actually used RAPGIS, a rapid appraisal technique. I'm a research associate at the Stockholm Environment Institute. I've been working on GIS projects for the last 17 years including participatory mapping projects. One of these was to validate and refine the England natural habitat map for Yorkshire and Humberside. By Rocky now we're aware When you came a 
along, we were going nowhere. Everyone in the institute thinks you'd be great. Cause now you've moved us up to number eight. Uh -huh. Rocky, you're noted for charm and tact, bombarding the world with theory and facts. Maybe the time you should start to fear is when the British Navy miracles your sweet of the year. Follow just like lambs to the slaughter, and you sometimes got to sin to deep water. Think it's time that you should go and leave us in the hands of another Johan. Goodbye, Rocky, now we're aware. When you came along, we were going nowhere. Everyone in the institute thinks you're being great, because now you're with us up to number eight. Goodbye, Rocky, now we're aware. Everyone in the institute thinks you're being great Now you're moving up to number eight